ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਅਕਾਲ ਚੈਨਲ ਦੇਖ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਜੀ ਆ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਕਿ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਹੀ ਹੈ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਮੇਂ ਸਮੇਂ ਸਿਰ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਨਿਤ ਨਵੀਂ ਜੋ ਵੀ ਟੈਕਨੋਲੋਜੀ ਹੈ ਜਾਂ ਜੋ ਵੀ ਨਵਾਂ ਕੁਝ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਸਮੇਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹ ਦੱਸਣ ਦੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਉਹਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਹਮੇਸ਼ਾ ਉਹਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਹੀ ਆਪਾਂ ਫੋਕਸ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਪਰ ਅੱਜ ਜਿਸ ਚੀਜ਼ ਬਾਰੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਨ ਜਾ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਉਹ 180 ਸਾਲ ਪੁਰਾਣੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਖਾਸ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਜਿਸ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਫੋਕਸ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਉਹ ਇੱਕ ਐਫ ਜੀ ਐਫ ਜੀ ਮੈਡੀਸਨ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਐਸੀ ਐਸੀ ਲਾਈਨ ਹੈ ਜਿਸ ਨੂੰ ਇੰਨਾ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਵਰਤਿਆ ਨਹੀਂ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਪਰ ਉਹ ਉਨੀ ਹੀ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਇਫੈਕਟਿਵ ਹੈ ਜਾਂ ਮਾਫ ਕਰਨਾ ਹੈ ਮੇਰੇ ਕਹਿਣ ਤੋਂ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਬੈਟਰ ਇਹੀ ਹੋਊਗਾ ਕਿ ਯੂਕੇ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇੰਨਾ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਵਰਤਿਆ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਬਾਕੀ ਦੁਨੀਆ ਦੇ ਦੇਸ਼ਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵਰਤਿਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਆਓ ਅੱਜ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਆਪਣਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਜੋ ਪੈਨਲ ਹੈ ਜੋ ਸਾਡੇ ਗੈਸਟ ਨੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਆਪਣੀ ਇੰਟਰੋਡਕਸ਼ਨ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਤੇ ਮੈਂ ਹੁਣ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਬੋਲਣ ਦੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰੂੰਗਾ ਤੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਵੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰਨਾ ਕਿ ਜੋ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਸਮਝ ਲੱਗ ਸਕੇ ਬਾਕੀ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਜੋ ਸਾਡੇ ਗੈਸਟ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰਨਗੇ ਕਿ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਮੇਂ ਸਮੇਂ ਸਿਰ ਦੱਸਿਆ ਜਾਵੇ ਕਿ ਕਿਸ ਚੀਜ਼ ਬਾਰੇ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਹੋ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਜੀ ਸੋ ਆਵਰ ਟੂਡੇਸ ਗੈਸਟ ਗੈਸਟਰ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਕੁਲਵੰਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਕੁਲਵੰਤ ਉਪੋ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਨ ਦੇਅਰਸ ਹੈਲਨ ਬੋਮਨ and Greg White. So I'll start with uh, with Kulwant and I'll ask my guests uh, to introduce themselves so we can start uh, the show and we can start talk, uh, talking about homeopathy. <coughs> so Mr. Kulwant. Uh, um, myself is Kulwant Tupala. I'm the uh, pharmacy professional and the faculty member. And um, I'm the part and parcel of, um, um, since um, the last couple of weeks, I've become an international um, representative for the faculty of homeopathy. Okay. It's going to represent uh, the worldwide um, from the UK side. That's great. Uh, Helen? Hi, welcome. Hello. I'm really pleased to be here. I'm Dr. Helen Beaumont. I'm um, a homeopathic doctor. Um, I also do some general practice. And I'm here as the president of the Faculty of Homeopathy. Okay, great. Greg? Hello, my name's Greg White. I'm the chief executive of the faculty, which means it's my job and uh, to work with my team and look after the membership services for the organization, make sure members are getting lots of value and uh, make sure that we're growing and running in the way that we should do. Great. So this board is uh, actually 180 years uh, old. So <coughs> we'll just start uh, doing some, or we'll just uh, ask some basic question and then we will uh, go to what we are looking for, what we are uh, looking to. Uh, Uh, let's say teach you uh, teach you uh, our audience oh, we hope so uh, so at the end we'll uh, just uh, discuss we what we have learned so I'll just uh, start with Kulwant so what is homeopathy well um, homeopathy is a complementary or alternative therapy um, it's well known as um, the complementary medicines um, in the um, public views um, but it is the medicine a part of medicine which okay is, um, invented by the um, actually a physician um, Dr Hanneman who was actually a com- conventional doctor a conventional doctor, doctor who invented this um, complement therapy and is based on the law of similars that means like cures likes and um, very uh, small doses um, where the nearly no molecules left in the medicines but and uh, very diluted medicines are called complement medicines well usually uh, the the physics is a very dif- uh, different uh, line of from medicine the conventional medicine it's it's from uh, the basics are from biology right but physics it's just uh, it's just not not very usual thing well that's the debate um, is going on for the last 200 years okay um, but um, uh, this I'll be honest i have no such answers how it works but it's working very definitely working we very confident it works and there's a patient perspective there's lots of evidence coming behind <coughs> which is working very well Right. So how uh, what made you want to uh, train in homeopathy? Well, I've been um, a GP in Solihull for about 8 to 10 years. Okay. And so you ju- sorry to interrupt you. So you just didn't start from homeopathy. No, I didn't start. No, t- not at all. I was okay. in a medical school and I did all my training within the West Midlands and then I uh, was in a GP partnership. And I just became very aware of there's a lots of situations where we wasn't really able to um cure people. 
So there's a lot of time, a lot of the drugs we were using were quite suppressive. So for ex- yeah. you know, so take for example eczema. You have your eczema, you put some steroid cream on, brilliant, looks as if it's gone, stop the cream, what happens? It breaks out worse than it was before. Yeah. And so I was thinking there has to be something else. There has to be something else that we can use that is not going to have side effects, um, is not adding one drug on top of another drug on top of another drug to try and... Uh, suppress, suppress the disease. The, yes. Instead of curing it. Yeah, so we're not talking about antibiotics or anti-inflammatories. We're talking about something that actually allows the body to heal itself. And I was looking around thinking, you know, what, what else can I do? What else can I have in my toolkit? And so I started studying homeopathy and I was blown away by, by the results. It's just so good to look at a patient as a whole, rather than just looking at the eczema or this named disease, you're looking at the individual. And it's a very holistic medicine. And well, as I say, we get some superb results. From homeopathy? From homeopathy. So not just conventional medicine. So you do prescribe uh, conventional medicine? Yes. Yeah, I, I think uh, I like to have a really uh, integrative approach. So I think in certain situations you need the best conventional medicine and you need the best <coughs> homeopathic medicine. Okay, so you don't just don't say just leave the conventional medicine and just practice homeopathy? What, well, I, in my private homeopathic practice, just prescribe homeopathy. Okay. But I will work very closely with their family doctor and uh, the ideal would be that you, you would start off, say, with somebody who'd got asthma, that as, as the homeopathy starts to work, they can gradually start to reduce the conventional medicine. But as a doctor, I'm well placed to be able to know when that's safe and when yeah. that's effective. So you wouldn't want somebody just stopping all their treatment dead because that could create a lot of problems. You need to have a nice integrative approach where you know the effects of both sets of medicines and gradually reduce as needs be. Great. Uh, so, Greg, can you just give us a brief history of the, of the faculty? Certainly. <coughs> it's quite an, an old organisation. We go back many years. Um, Samuel Hahnemann uh, was mentioned by Kulwant as the, the father, if you like, of homeopathy. He lived in Germany between uh, 1755 and 1843. Um, and the faculty was actually established very shortly after his death uh, in, the, in the UK, in 1844. So our roots go all the way back to the middle of the 19th century. Uh, we were then incorporated by an act of UK Parliament, by an act of legislation uh, okay. in, in 1950, um, as a group of medical homeopaths. So uh, we, we were sort of carried along with the formation of the National Health Service in the UK and, uh, and professionalised as a group of clinicians at that time. Um, we are the, the oldest homeopathic, uh, medical homeopathic group in the world and, um, and we represent statutorily regulated healthcare professionals. So doctors, dentists, vets, pharmacists, uh, podiatrists, uh, nurses. The common denominator is always that they're regulated healthcare So not just doctors? Not just. Doctors? Not just doctors, no. no we have something like 400 doctors uh, in the ranks of the faculty membership, okay. over 100 pharmacists, over 100 vets, and a, and a wide range of other disciplines as well. And then in um, 2013, we became a, a so-called designated body, which means that we've had the, uh, a kite mark, if you like, of uh, quality assurance from the G- UK's General Medical Council. And it means that we're responsible for the, um, the training and appraisal mm-hmm. of, um, uh, of doctors here in the UK. That's great. Mm. Well, thank you. Uh, if we talk about homeopathy, a lot of people doesn't know about it. And as we talk with her, Helen, she told her uh, something about that. It's different. But, but how exactly it is different from conventional medicine? Well, um, <coughs> one could say uh, the conventional medicines looks at um, sick individuals as a part or, or um, organism um, in, a, in a piece of work kind of stuff the name to this disease, as Helen mentioned, uh, so know, eczema. But in homeopathy, it's a um, totally uh, different view, so we look at the holistic way. Um, we look the, the, at the whole person and uh, why it happened, um, in the uh, sense of we're taking the whole total symptoms, whether in allergic or whether it comes start from the for root, a, root. For any disease or? For, for all, the, all the diseases. For homeopathic, we're totally different to conventionals. 
Um, in uh, conventional medicines, it's a wonderful stuff um, when the doctor find uh, one particular condition, they refer to the consultant and the consultant is look after the particular tests, um, which we're not against it because we are conventionally trained, but they are very focused on the one area. And um, as you say, the patients like uh, in the 50s and, and older, they have a, more often have a one or more medical conditions um, than they end up seeing um, two or three consultants um, for the same person. And they are going to end up um, maybe one or maybe two or maybe five or six different kind of medications to, to try to resolve the symptoms. But when as a homeopathic perspective, mm, we take the whole um, patient's symptoms in one off. So there's one homeopath involved to look after the whole symptoms and to work out to bring the, the picture medicines, which is suitable for the whole entire symptoms. So you're just saying that there's just one symptom? Uh, there's uh, maybe 10 symptoms. Okay, but so sorry, uh, mm. there's just one cause for, for any disease well, he can have? Well, the Hanneman in the ideas of the of homeopathic father is this is the body is relying on vital force, which is the paramount to keep in, intact um, to the throughout. If there's any imbalance in the vital force, that's the main cause um, where the conditions comes into forward and produce emotional and mental and physical symptoms. And to fix that one cause, we, we summarize the repertory to find the medicine picture of the homeopathic medicine, which is very resembling that symptoms where the patient are actually presenting. So we pick that medicine, so the patient might end up for 10 different symptoms, one medications only, in contrast to the commercial medicine, where the patient can end up with maybe six medicines for the different symptoms if it comes through this way. So you study 10 different s symptoms to uh, reach one cause, right? It, it will be the homeopathic medicine. Mm -hmm. If you go to the repertory, uh, might be five or six or eight different symptoms. Okay. When we come under one medicine, so where you take with one medicine and you be gone away. Well, usually in uh, conventional medicine, uh, when there are eight different uh, symptoms, one can think there, there are eight different diseases. Yes, that, that's, that's the slight difference, um, the hypothesis of conventional medicine and the homeopathic medicines. Um, when you go to a doctor to yeah. seek one advice, um, let's say a common cough, which is very common stuff. Yeah. Uh, um, when the conventional um, uh, perspective of the common cough is um, you have a fixed uh, drugs um, regime for the, the, the cough medicines, which is mostly on going to be the, the tent, the cough is um, identical um, for all patients. So the, the cough medicines, it might be um, mucus dry the mucus or um, lower the histamines or just get the help sleep yeah. to treat the cough. So okay. they think cough so is identical. Again, just suppress it. Suppress it. Mm -hmm. So but the homeopathic perspective, they, they will take a cough at different views. Um, the cough could be um, a the symptom. The symptom of one or the other way around. And we take the, the total system, the involvement, um, say if somebody have a cough, and cough getting worse when they, when they go to cold air, or cough getting better when they go to cold air. So that's a that's, uh, different model of um, looking the cough um, into the homeopathic philosophy. So it might be different medicine for the same cough if patient get better when they go to cold air, or another medication if a patient get worse when cold air in homeopathy for the same cough. So, so you just study the patient? So we have to go to the, to the repertory to find out uh, what makes better, what makes worse, and that would go to root cause. That's the real difference. Uh, into but the doesn't it take more time than conventional medicine? It, it does. That's, that's mm -hmm. the point. Uh, Sometimes the, uh, the homeopathic trained, you might take more <coughs> than an hour to work out uh, what the best suitable medicine for the patient to, to go to root cause. Okay. So push the hypothesis in homeopathy is to, to, to strive for cure. But when the contrast and the real difference in conventional medicine, the, they're striving to control the many of the symptoms. So um, if I go to lay language, uh, if somebody have a high blood pressure and it's been diagnosed by the high blood pressure, you will take the tablets for the rest of life. Yeah. So when the tablet is taken, that's controlling the symptom, the blood pressure within the, within the limits. Um, but the, when you take off the, the tablets off, the blood pressure go back to normal. So where it will be high, high level again. So that means sensibly it's not curing the cause of the end cause. It's just suppressing. We're managing the symptom. Yeah. But when it's come to homeopathy, we will strive to get the go to the root why it's going in the first place up. So then find the symptoms, find the totality symptoms, and work it out to find the rest, best medicine possible with homeopathic medicine, which can go into be uh, focused on to the curing it. So if, if the medicine can be found, it can be better to bring it down 
to, to, to normal. So if the medicine will be taken off, um, hopefully, hopefully, the blood pressure will be back to normal. Okay. Mm. So Helen, what Colvin just said, it may take more time. Yes. But it definitely cure uh, the, the the disease. In just uh, the case, he, he have, for example, he told me about high blood pressure. Yes. You, uh, in conventional medicine, you have to take tablets for your whole life. It's lifetime medication. But, but he is just said that you can cure uh, this disease uh, in homeopathy. Is, is that correct? Um, it, we do try our best to try mm. and uh, be able to bring people's blood pressure down. Uh, but then it means that it's not lifelong medication. And also, it, there is not one t drug to do one thing, and then because you get side effects, you then have another drug to do something else. So what I may have in front of me is someone, yes, they may have high blood pressure, but they may also have some arthritis in their left knee. Uh, they may, in the past, uh, find that their symptoms started when their mother died. And what we do is build up a picture of that individual. Mm -hmm. So everybody is treated as an individual. Well, it may uh, take uh, some time. Doesn't the, the patient get frustrated? Or because uh, uh, um, in normal world, we want to see the result immediately. Mm. So I think that's true. But I think also <coughs> people have actually getting at times a little disillusioned when you, know, you go along and you have perhaps a very short 10-minute consultation yeah. where the GP is saying, I'm really sorry, but I can only... Prescribe you this one or two, yeah. two problems at a time, yeah. and I'd really like to. Uh, so when they come along, and I've you know I'm doing sixty to ninety minutes. I'm really listening to the patient, and people say, you know, I've never told anybody that before, or you've really understood me. You've really got to the heart of what has been happening here, yeah. and you build up this picture of this patient, the individual, that is individual to them, unique to them, and what we do is then pattern match with what we know about our homeopathic medicines. And uh, sometimes, yes, it does take time. I often use the analogy, it's a little bit like taking the layers off an onion. So we, we may give one homeopathic medicine and you know they feel a little bit better and then I'll see them in four weeks time and we move it on a little bit further. Uh, sometimes it's a zigzag approach. Sometimes people don't get better with the first medication and we need to look for something else. But that's also true in conventional medicine. But so uh, what other diseases uh, do, uh, does the homeopathy can treat? Well, I think that there's a there's a lot that we treat. I, I mean, the, the list of patients I see with what they've got is, is very, very varied. <coughs> I mean, I do think there are situations where it's important to have a conventional diagnosis. Yeah. Uh, and if, uh, if people have got cancer, I think it's important that they, they see their oncologist, they see their surgeon. But at the same time, homeopathy can act very well in supporting them through that treatment. So uh, it can go um, hand by hand or hand side by hand. side? Side uh, by side. Mm. And that's why I like to think of it as uh, complementary rather than alternative. Because it's not, it doesn't have to okay. be one or the other. What we can do, uh, especially if you're medically trained, is work very well with conventional medicine to really optimize people's health and survivorship. And well-being. So the conventional medicine can suppress it, but a homeopathy is treating it. Yes. Yeah. In but the you meantime, have to, you have to know what you do. So you just have to calibrate. Uh, calibrate. Some. Yes. Exactly. Wait. Yes. So Greg, uh, what are uh, we are going back to the faculty? So, mm, uh, so what are the faculty main aims? What are they are looking for? I think you can probably sum them up in, in three three main areas actually. Okay. Um, academic membership and promotion, chiefly. That's, that's pretty much what we do. Um, so the academic life of the of the faculty, as as, as the name suggests, we're, we're an academic body. We do training and education for regulated healthcare professionals who want to study homeopathy alongside all of their conventional training. Okay. Um, so we have a range of different educational programs, um, which uh, provide a full pathway really from a foundation level, if you like, through to something which is much more at master's level in mm -hmm. higher education parlance. Um, the courses themselves are very uh, modular in construction, so they're very user-friendly, actually. Uh, you can take a fast track or a slow track, uh, depending on your life 
circumstances. Mm. And so, so, sorry to interrupt you. Mm. What does it exactly mean, fast track or slow track? Um, it, it means that uh, one can train at, uh, um, take advantage of the faculty's teaching centres, of which there are nine around the world, okay. four, four or five here in the UK. Um, and they'll run a range of programs which are very much tailored to the individual learner. So you can go at your own pace and uh, study at your own pace and qualify at your own pace, which means that there's a great deal of flexibility for people. Uh, for people in a hurry who are perhaps quite advanced in their medical careers and see homeopathy very much as a, uh, or perhaps it's coming to them later in their professional career, there's a fast track option whereby we can accelerate them through. Um, membership is the, is the second main area of the faculties activities. We have um, around about 750 members in the UK and around the world. Um, the majority of those are doctors, uh, but vets and pharmacists and other healthcare professionals make up a big, big uh, pr proportion of the membership as well. Um, and we uh, provide a range of member services like most organisations do, uh, newsletters, publications, lobbying, representation and so on. And that's my main job is to make sure that members get benefit from from uh, joining the organisation. And then the last area is promotion, uh, and that's really where it, it's uh, really great to have opportunities such as this to sit down with you today and talk about the work that the faculty does. Um, we do quite a lot of work with um, television stations and with print media in particular, um, and quite a lot of radio work as well, where we talk about homeopathy, so talk about the benefits to patients, yeah, we are doing and, and, and how you yeah. can access it as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Colvon, we have already talked about it, uh, and Helen explain, uh, explained it very well, the con conventional <coughs> medicine and homeopathy go side by side. Yeah. But I want you to clear it further that can homeopathy itself, can uh, homeopathy itself replace uh, conventional medicine? Um, the answer is no. Okay. Um, because um, as a medically trained, um, you have to be look after um, the balance of both hands. Being trained in both sides, um, I'm sitting on the fence now, <laughs> okay. and you see um, which one the best for the patient. Yeah, sure. Of course, that's that's what we are here for. Sure. So uh, there are certain conditions where um, homeopathy shouldn't be used at all. Um, I will give one example. So, okay. Um, like a uh, meningitis, mm -hmm. like, but it's a very um, condition where patients should be straightforward to the hospital emergency and straight into an intravenous antibiotics. There are no other options available. Um, so, okay, so there are uh, cases uh, when you do, uh, don't have to use, yeah. or you don't want to use no, homeopathy. In, in this case, um, there's time, and um, but it's kicking in, so yeah, we sure. have to be a life saving. So um, there shouldn't be so homeopathy. So homeopathy isn't for emergencies? They, they are homeopathy, they're not for emergency. Yes, okay. Well, but there are situations like um, somebody have appendicitis, and there's no other option, so it's straight surgeon's knife straight away. So that's, um, well, there's an option for homeopathy, but these are conditions um, where we call the life threatening. So we have to be used the best uh, of the both worlds. Um, and the equally said that um, there are the conditions where the, um, either uh, conventional medicine have a little or no effect, like uh, Helen mentioned earlier, eczema, psoriasis, um, arthritis kind of condition, where the, um, homeopathy do well. And um, I can tell um, from the experience, um, and even so, in th in that cases, can homeopathy, uh, homeopathy replace a conventional medicine? It should be replaced. Uh, it this conventional medicine, uh, of course, is the best medicine um, in the world. Uh, usually, uh, some people are fed up with conventional medicine, yeah. Yeah. so they just mm. don't want to take mm. uh, yeah. the conventional medicine. No, no. So, they in the, uh, these yeah. cases, no, they, they shouldn't come off conventional medicine. We're never going to recommend. Okay, it, mm. but um, we can take on the homeopathic side as mm. side by side with the conventional medicine. But we will reach at one level where um, the patient feel better and their consultant or healthcare providers will be feel better mm -hmm. and they will decide um, what the best to bring the medication down at that end. But I, I as, a, yeah, a, as a, a homeopathic consultant uh, feel very comfortable that if people are mm -hmm. well and because I'm, I'm a doctor I feel very comfortable helping people reduce their conventional medicine. So there are certain situations where people do absolutely stop all their conventional medicine. Uh, but I think what I'm worried about is the message that people stop their conventional medicine before they come and see us. Mm. So what I would suggest is you, you find a really good homeopathic doctor uh, or pharmacist and when your symptoms are really well under control and your vital 
energy is good and you're well, you can, we can then start gradually reducing stuff. Because there's a lot of medicines now, conventional medicines, that have a lot of side effects. Yeah. And the, the situation, so um, if you're pregnant, you don't want to be taking conventional medicine unless it's really indicated. Yeah. So this is where um, homeopathy I- is so good. So say particularly say for morning sickness, uh, homeopathy is ideal. For small children and babies, for elderly that are already on a lot of conventional medicine, with all the side effects even if i can just manage some of their conditions with homeopathy and then they don't have to take even more drugs all well and good yeah well okay so uh well kulvan told us that there are some cases that uh, where homeopathy shouldn't be used mm. or it, it isn't necessary to use so what uh, i would like to know is uh, are there any other conditions uh, where homeopathy doesn't need to be used I think it depends on severity of illness. So um, interestingly, I do know that in India, possibly meningitis, if you can't get to conventional medicine, could be managed by homeopathy. But there's no way in the UK that you would do that. But I have seen people who've come to see me after they've had meningitis, and they've been treated with a conventional yeah. medicine, they've had their antibiotics, yeah but they still feel unwell. Sorry, sorry, Helen, we are going for a break. Okay. We'll be back uh, in just one minute, and we will uh, we'll see you there. Bye, Guruji Ka Khalsa. We can see you there. In 106 countries, we are watching the Akal Channel. In any country, live or de-live, there is a whole technology in the world. ਸਾਰਾ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਹਾਈ ਡੈਫੀਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਤੇ ਕਵਰ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਵੇਗਾ ਜੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਗੁਰੂ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਦੇ ਪੈਗਾਮ ਨੂੰ ਘਰ-ਘਰ ਤੱਕ ਪਹੁੰਚਾਉਣਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਹੋ ਤਾਂ ਅੱਜ ਹੀ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਰਿਕਾਰਡ ਕਰਵਾਉਣ ਲਈ ਸੰਪਰਕ ਕਰੋ 0770274890 ਤੇ Why could you call so uh, as you know, we are talking about homeopathy and especially about the faculty that's 180 years old. And we have the members here. So I'll just go to Greg then. Uh, Greg, as you mentioned, the faculty has uh, international membership. Mm. What, cu- what countries do you have the, the members in? Might be easier to say which countries you don't have <laughs> members in, actually. Um, so it's, a, it's a very international grouping these days. Um, but I guess if I were pointing to particular clusters of people, um, homeopathy is very widely accepted and understood, of course, in the South, Asi- South Asian uh, area of the world and, and communities. Um, so India and Pakistan and um, um, uh, you know, ba- Bangladesh. A, um, Bangladesh, mm. yeah, th- these are very key areas for us. Mm. And of course, there's a very large uh, South Asian diaspora in the Gulf states as well. Um, so we're interested in establishing some partnerships and finding um, new projects uh, in that particular area of the world. Uh, there's quite a lot of homeopathic interest in Japan and Australasia and just in recent years we're finding that there's um, an increasing amount of interest in Brazil actually in Central America. So we're talking with a range of organizations there at the moment about um, how we might be able to extend our curriculum out to partner colleges. Well that's great. So I'll go back to Colvant then. As a pharmacy professional, uh, how, uh, how did you become interested in, in homeopathy? Yes, yeah, very good question. Um, I'll tell you the experience. Uh, as a matter of fact that um, I was interested in homeopathy before I become a pharmacy professional. Well, yeah, as, as an Indian, we do have a certain history with homeopathy. That's, that's very true. Um, I'll tell you, um, at the age of 17, um, I acquired uh, the fever of unknown religion. Okay. Um, but at that time, um, I was lucky enough, because um, my dad can um, support the, the treatment, you know everything is private in India. The temperature was lasted for three months, and I lost um, almost all my mass at all. I would look like a skeleton. Okay. All uh, possible pathology, all treatment, all tests couldn't rule out uh, what the region of the temperature at all. Conventional medicine. So, yeah, conventional yeah. medicine. So whenever I take medicine, paracetamol, or brufen, the, the fever goes down for, for a couple of hours, matter, it comes back to where it was. 
So I was unable to eat and uh, unable to walk last day I was. Even the relative was looking at me, they were thought, making doubt that I couldn't survive. And um, once commercial medicines um, didn't achieve much or do little, and that led my parents to take me to local homeopath. For alternative um, medicines? Uh, uh, local okay. homeopath, very famous homeopaths about that in the vicinity, and my dad took me down there. And within two days, um, surprisingly, my, my temperature was gone. Just in two days? Two days. Um, after three months, tried conventional well, best possible Well, medicine. maybe it doesn't take that long in homeopathy. Yeah, and um, although I had to continue and take my medication the next seven days, um, but that real event put me uh, more in trust into homeopathy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that so event mm -hmm. made me bring into it. So you uh, just started from there, or you just started? Started. No, then then um, uh, interest goes on, then I studied pharmacy in the UK. Okay. And uh, after um, keeping that interest, when I was a professional working in pharmacy, and I found the conventional medicines have limitations in mm -hmm. certain conditions where people do ask. Um, so I to dig out my own story and found out the faculty who were actually teaching homeopathy in the UK. So I put an option to study the faculty's course at London mm -hmm. to, to um, get those qualifications and can mix the both worlds where the patients need best on the both sides. So I'm very pleased to, to explain that uh, I know on the both worlds now and give the best, best possible mm -hmm. treatment if they need. Okay, uh, so Helen, we, we have a living example right yes. here of yes. conventional medicine and homeopathy. Yeah. But we haven't cleared it yet. How does e exactly homeopathy work? I think that's a really interesting mm. question. Mm. And I think um, there's lots of investigations going on at the moment in basic sciences that will s very soon reveal probably how it actually works. Okay. But I think I, I like to almost <coughs> tell a story around it, really, that if you, um, looking at this law of similars, if you think what it's <coughs> like when you've got a cold or someone's got hay fever and their eyes are streaming and their nose is streaming and they feel really rotten, and also think what it's like when you're chopping onions. Yeah. The same thing happens. Your eyes stream, your nose streams. So allium sepia, which is red onion, is one of the homeopathic medicines we used for hay fever. And hay fever, you know, hay fever is a big problem in the UK. If you think it happens, you know, can be really bad around May and June when everybody is doing their exams, so the GCSEs, A-levels, and they don't want to take antihistamines because that can make you drowsy. Mm -hmm. So I see a lot of people for managing their hay fever. And homeopathy is just so effective for that. And uh, that's an example where it can be really, really helpful. Okay, so are there uh, another examples like that? Well, where, where homeopathy is helpful, um, I'm, I'm thinking really of a, a lady I saw the other day, and she'd had migraine for 10, 15 years, and it was getting worse and worse to the extent that she was missing two or three days of work a month. Well, and they were, about to make, they were about to fire her on grounds of ill health because she was missing so much time off work. Okay. She came to see me, listened to her story, matched what she was telling me about the symptoms, what made the headache worse, what made it better, uh, certain foods that made her worse. And by m listening to all the information, I then prescribed her a homeopathic medicine called Natrum Muriaticum. And the first day she took it, her headache was a little worse, which we can sometimes have. You can sometimes have a bit of an aggravation. And then after that, we're now eight weeks down the line, she hasn't had one single headache. And she, so that when I saw her first at four weeks afterwards, no headache, saw her eight weeks, no headache. And I gave her a phone call the other day before I was coming and 12 weeks now, she hasn't had a headache. And these are the, um, you're quite right, this is a very, really interesting mm. area to explore. And it's, it's where the faculty attempts to capture case notes essentially. Um, working with Helen and other mm. members of the faculty, um, we're able to identify some really interesting uh, case study examples of where homeopathy is working with individuals. Yeah. Um, that, that's the type of material which will go out in our regular newsletters because mm. it helps other clinicians to sort of, mm. uh, you know, to take all this good practice mm. and all this good news on board. And we also have an academic publication which which is a little bit um, more targeted at the scientist and the mm. academic and the clinical researcher. 
Um, it's called Homeopathy, the journal. And that's the, um, it's the only journal of its kind in the whole world um, with over 100,000 yes. downloads a year. So it's, it's very popular and that attempts to articulate some of the more basic science questions. Okay, so mm. are there any other benefits of being a member of this faculty? We were all in uh, Belfast uh, in November of last year for the Faculty of Homeopathy Congress 2016, okay. which is our major flagship event. Uh, we had over 190 attendees um, from the faculty membership and also drawing on, I think it was 16 different countries around the world. So it was a really, it was a real celebration of homeopathy's success and diversity, um, really, in, in a global sense. And um, we, we attempt to do as many events and uh, member mm. communications as we can do. But Congress mm. is great. Mm. Oh, thank you. That's mm. great. Uh, can the public, uh, uh, so you work in pharmacy. Yes, I'm mm. So and that's an appropriate question for you. Uh, can the public buy homeop uh, homeopathic medicine over the counter? Yes. Um, um, if not all, the majority of pharmacies do stock homeopathic medicines over the <coughs> counter. Okay, so majority of them and they the can buy on the counter. Yeah, big chains, uh, especially the Booth, Lloyds and Murray's, they all um, stocks up and down the country. The okay. People can buy um, the um, homeopathic medicine over the counter. Um, but again, because homeopathy is very individualized, people still can benefit of it, but um, if they're going to train professionals and pharmacists who train in homeopathy or doctors who train like Helen, and they'd be more beneficial, but they yes, they can buy. Okay. So well, there, there are quite a few specialized pharmacies in the country who actually uh, do only homeopathic medicines. Um, yeah. So there are pharmacies that do uh, do only they for for homeopathy. homeopathy. They are yes. Ensworth, um, um, Nelson, and Nelson's, right, and yeah. Free Freeman's mm. and Helios. And Helios. Yeah. They are um, proper mm. uh, set of uh, pharmacies, regulated pharmacies, but they are purely specialized. In homeopathic medicines. And you can ring them up yeah. and there's, you will always get um, a, a homeopathic pharmacist on the end of the phone who will be able to advise. And I think for sort of simple stuff and first aid, mm -hmm. it, homeopathy is really good for promoting self-care. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily need to go and see your doctor mm -hmm. for, for bruises, for sore throats, um, burns. You can use homeopathy very effectively from over-the-counter preparations. Uh, but when it gets more complicated, that's when yeah. it's really good. Mm -hmm. If you've got complex problems and you're on a lot of conventional medicine, I think it's important that you see a homeopathic doctor. But if, um, if we're talking about first aid situation, so Arnica is really, really good for bruises yeah. and bleeding or head injuries. Arnica. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think I've used it. You have used Arnica, yeah. yeah. Th that's kind of sort I mean, of a lot of yeah, But I, I never knew about that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was homeopath. Yeah, it is. That's it's right. And a lot of people yeah. don't because you've used Arnica, perhaps as the cream rather than b by taking it by mouth. Mm. But uh, so a lot. that's how a lot of doctors might have come to it first because they may have used it when they've been on skiing trips and mm. they've had a really n nasty fall and someone gives them some arnica and they realize next day thinking their leg would be you know purple that actually it's really good and my mm. you know my son used to use it on the rugby field so when he f mm. if he had a bad injury he would just take some arnica and they heal really quickly well, uh, um, as Greg has ruled uh, uh, the faculty has a growing in member yeah. I think it's a good business to invest in <laughs> <laughs> that may be. Yeah. may be. Certainly, Arnica mm. works. Um, my father had a tumble um, at home. Uh, he's fairly elderly now. Um, thankfully, you know, nothing serious. But um, he, he, he tried Arnica on my recommendation mm. as chief executive of the faculty, and, yeah. uh, <laughs> and he, he said the results mm. were, were remarkable. Mm. Yeah. So, um, if you met my father, I think you'd uh, understand that's quite something coming from him. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, we have seen Arnica. But can you yeah. give? Uh, well, you have uh, quite a, a lot of uh, yeah, medicine. So can you mm. just tell us what, yeah, what these uh, are for? Th this is the b one of the best medicines. Well, I can guess. It's a teeth. It's, a yeah. so <laughs> it's for the children, uh, kids uh, who are just have teething problems. Okay. And it's so safe, have no side effects whatsoever. But Helen will me back me up then. Mm. And it's over the counter. And uh, I, I'm going to please tell you the patient actually buying uh, as they have previously used and at their own experience. And uh, it's openly they, they buy more of this one than compared to the normal gels. Because uh, a couple of years ago, I remember that um, there was uh, one gel used to be for the teething gel, mm. one taken off the shelves because they found into a, a kind of aspirin stuff in there. So the, although they are now um, alternate available, but people still prefer to having this one as a um, safe and alternative mm -hmm. medicine for teething gel. 
Mm. And there are other ones? Mm. Yeah. Arnica. Yeah, there's a, the one is the Arnica one, which is, um, we already mentioning. It's yeah. very good for uh, supplements, brushes, or and do this kind of stuff then from here. And um, there's some gelsenium, uh, which is, um, again, uh, over the counter, if you feel and so all it. these mentions. Sorry, let yeah. me talk about yeah. 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 I, this. Is really interesting. I had a yeah. sure. um, patient the other day, and he'd failed his driving test four times, and okay. he was so nervous. He was so apprehensive. S he literally would shake as he get into the car to do mm -hmm. his driving yeah. test, and uh, I treated him with gelsemium. So what happened? He passed. He passed, he wasn't shaking, he wasn't trembling, and it's also quite good if, if people get very nervous before examinations. Mm, okay, okay yes. so I never knew about that. Yeah, <laughs> because you see, you can't take Valium, can you, before a driving test? Yes. You know, you, you would be drowsy, you'd fall asleep, you'd be drugged. So this is where homeopathy it comes into its own. It's mm. not too, uh, let's say, the dosage is not too big. So yeah, you're not going to sedate. You're mm. not, it, it, it's, it, it's helping it, the body heal itself. So the, the body, you, you then find that inner courage that you can pass your driving test. You don't need to tremble, you don't need to shake, you'll be fine. Okay, so mm. what other, other kind of patients, what sort of patients do you see regularly? Oh, because I've got private practice, a lot of it is chronic disease because it's a lot of the time the people have had a lot of conventional medicine and they're getting very frustrated uh -huh. that, that, that they don't know then where to go. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I could just, a long list of things. So we see quite a lot of inflammatory uh, diseases. So people with ulcerative colitis or Crohn's or rheumatoid arthritis. I see a lot of skin conditions, psoriasis, vitiligo, eczema, lichen planus. Uh, quite a lot of women come to see me for gynecological problems or when they're struggling with um, the menopause, with the hot sweats. And there may be a reason why they can't go on hormone replacement <coughs> therapy. And this is where homeopathy fits in very well. Uh, so, I mean, the list is very long. Migraine, uh, chronic fatigue. Chronic fatigue is so difficult mm. to manage in general practice because we're so limited in what we can do with conventional medicine. So to be able to use homeopathy for you know, the fibromyalgia and the chronic fatigue I I is so enlightening. You know, I've got people who are actually able to get out of bed and they gradually, over the next couple of months, they can have been out of work for you know, 10 years and they're just starting to be able to mobilize, starting to get back to work. So the, the list is long, the list is long. So, <coughs> Greg, can you, exp uh, can you explain what faculty training courses uh, provides? It's, um, it's a professional pathway, basically, for, for clinicians who want to study homeopathy, in essence. Um, and there's a range of qualifications from, from basic starter level um, through to a very accomplished um, level of training for experienced clinicians. Um, and uh, students can stop and start, um, they can go slowly or quickly, as I said a little earlier. So it's actually a very individualised approach to training and education. Um, here in the UK, principally, it's conducted through a teaching centre in Bristol, uh, a teaching centre in London, uh, and also a centre in Glasgow. Um, and then we have a range of international uh, teaching facilities dotted around the world as well in different countries. Um, so there's no real one-size-fits-all, actually. Mm -hmm. It's very adaptable to, for people to train in, in, at different speeds and in different places and in different times. It's quite user-friendly in that sense. And not all training is the same. So a vet and vet's training may look very different from a doctor's training, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. So we have to be quite flexible in return. So you have many doctors uh, that, mm, that are going for homeopathy? Yes, I mean, the membership, doctor membership mm -hmm. of the faculty is over 400. Um, mm -hmm and rising so um, so yes it's it's a it's a it's a small number mm -hmm. of doctors taken in the round but it's actually so is it difficult for uh, to explain <coughs> a doctor what uh, homeopathy is normally a conventional medicine doctor uh, they just go for the conventional medicine mm -hmm. they just don't want to mm -hmm. hear anything else mm -hmm. is it is it difficult for for you to introduce homeopathy to uh, to our new doctors it must maybe one for Helen to shed mm. a little light on as well, but mm. um, certainly... It's, yeah, it is sometimes, yeah, yeah because it, it, we're very much taught um, a, a biochemical model 
of understanding Uh things on a molecular Mm. level with the pharmacology. Mm. And as you mentioned earlier, the sort of the physics of homeopathy is different. Mm. But I think it's not something that people study very early. It's often when they feel that they've been in general practice for a while and just aware of the limitations. And people are looking for something else to make people better. They want... So I went out to Hyderabad because we've got a teaching centre in Hyderabad and um, examined some Indian doctors there for their membership for the Faculty of Homeopathy. And there they've got a hospital with an outpatient. They see 300 people a day and they're doing fantastic work. Mm. And they've also got surgeons Mm. and gynaecologists there who if people need surgery, they can have their surgery, but they will also have the best homeopathy there. So it's lovely being having these international connections as well for the faculty. So, so, sorry. I was just going to say one thing I'm very keen to do is to actually um, be a bit more um, systematic about the way that we talk to the student community actually out there, mm-hmm. um, not just in the UK but around the world. But, but um, homeopathy should have a place in the curriculum, if you like, for medics mm-hmm. coming through um, training programmes. Mm-hmm. And um, we've done some work here in Birmingham in the UK uh, with with the local universities Mm -hmm. here, and I think that's something we could replicate elsewhere. Uh, Any student can join the faculty Mm -hmm. um, for a very uh, small amount of money, and uh, then they get all the membership benefits, which um, would help them speed their way through on a homeopathic pathway. Thank you. Uh, So, Kulwan, as a uh, of Indian origin, uh, Helen mentioned that she, she has been to Hyderabad. Have you ever experienced any homeopathy uh, hospital or have you been to India? What, what, what is your experience of India? Well, that's a very good question actually. I just came um, this year in Feb um, from the um, Indian side. I was uh, lucky enough to be uh, visiting one of the best um, federal centers, you can say, um, in Noida. Um, I have seen uh, homeopathy working on the grassroots. All the specialists there, uh, like Helen, mm. they are uh, commercial trained doctors. They have their postulations, MS, MDs, in a particular um, area, like I um, consultant or ophthalmologist, and uh, they are keen to prescribe home better medicines. Um, I, wasn't, I wasn't very sure um, before I went to their center. But, uh, so but they go uh, for conventional medicine and homeopathy? Mm-hmm. They, they are go side by side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, in India, homeopathy has gone a slightly different route to UK as well. For example? Uh, um, there are um, the only the course in homeopathy they can choose from the A levels after A levels. Um, okay. That's in contrast to UK at the moment, but um, there's another four and five years course uh, purely in homeopathic medicine. But apart from that, there are research centres. They have a consultant trained both ends. Mm-hmm. They are credential trained and uh, trained in homeopathic medicine. And I have seen, I have witnessed with my eyes, it's working very wonders on yeah. both sides. Fantastic. So, mm-hmm. so I was going to say it's fantastic, mm. you know. Yeah, so what do you think when you see uh, around you in the people, are they, are they open to homeopathy? Are they ready to be a part of homeopathy? What do you think? Well, or or there, there are some uh, contrasting comments or uh, thinking? Well, uh, when it, um, I have my personal experience in the pharmacy in the UK, uh, people actually who have tried, who have experience with homeopathy from their parents or grandparents or yeah. who have the family, they are very open to it very open to ideas and they are very um, easily uh, approachable and they ask for it. And those people actually, um, like myself and my own story, um, that's in another category when people have tried every single sort and didn't work for them and then exhausted um, with the treatment and they never achieve what they want to achieve, then that category come to homeopathic medicines. And um, I was um, able to refer a few patients uh, through their GPs to a uh, Royal Homeopathic Hospital in London and uh, to get uh, the homeopathic treatment because their category actually come from they tried um, all the uh, available conversion creams for psoriasis and eczema um, never achieved um, up to the level where they need to be so they've been referred to homeopathic hospital through the GP and mm-hmm. there's two categories basically um, one actually are they have experience or they know homeopathy better they're very open the other community which we need a little uh, pursuit or there's something optional available and they pick very fast, easily, because they have exhausted trying the commercial medicine for years and years, and achieving without anything. Mm. Oh, uh, that's great. Uh, so, Helen, mm. is homeopathy available in, in NHS? Is it, is it a part of NHS? It is part of the NHS, yes, and any GP can write a homeopathic prescription um, on a normal, you know, the green. 
just so rich they usually do it or? but I think it's difficult because if they're not trained in it you don't prescribe something you don't know about yeah. mm. but if you've had some training you can certainly uh, prescribe and there are NHS hospitals so uh, Bristol is a homeopathic hospital uh, as is London and in Glasgow so there are homeop- there is homeopathy available um, on the NHS in the so UK. So it's not just alternative medicine; it's a part of NHS. Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's it's this is a very fundamental point. It's not alternative; it's complementary. Mm. This is this is really crucial mm. that, that homeopathy um, sits alongside conventional medicine, and it's an extra tool in the box, if you like, for, mm. for medical practitioners to use. Mm. But, it's, it, but it's, it shouldn't be viewed as a substitute. Mm. Well, that's great. Uh, I'll just go to Colbant now, and I would like to uh, explain just for our audience. As as you know, we are a sick uh, sick TV channel, so I would just like to uh, you to talk uh, in Punjabi and explain just uh, what homeopathy is. And just we, as we have discussed uh, many, we have discussed many things. But I would just like to uh, use summarize in just two uh, two minutes uh, maximum. Yeah, sure. So, please. Um, ਹੋਮਿਓਪੈਥੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਸਾਡੀ ਇਹ ਇੱਕ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੀ ਦੇਸੀ ਦਵਾਈ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਨੂੰ ਨਾ ਪਰ ਅਸਲ ਵਿੱਚ ਦੇਸੀ ਦਵਾਈ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਜਰਮਨ ਦਵਾਈ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਜੇ ਬਿਲਕੁਲ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ੀ ਦਵਾਈ ਨਾਲ ਨਾਲ ਖਾਦੀ ਜਾ ਸਕਦੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਕੁਝ ਬਿਮਾਰੀਆਂ ਹੈਗੀਆਂ ਜਿਹਨਾਂ ਤੇ ਹੋਮਿਓਪੈਥੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਸੋਹਣਾ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਦੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਜੀ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਚੀਜ਼ਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਚਮੜੀ ਦੀਆਂ ਬਿਮਾਰੀਆਂ ਹੈਗੀਆਂ ਸੋਆਇਸਿਸ ਤੇ ਅਗਜ਼ੀਮਾ ਦੀ ਬਿਮਾਰੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਤੇ ਹੋਮਿਓਪੈਥੀ ਦਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਸੋਹਣਾ ਅਸਰ ਹੈਗਾ ਤੇ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਹੈਲਨ ਨੇ ਦੱਸਿਆ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਹੋਮਿਓਪੈਥੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈ ਐਨ ਐਚ ਐਸ ਤੇ ਮਿਲ ਸਕਦੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਨੂੰ ਜੀਪੀ ਨੂੰ ਬੜੇ ਪਿਆਰ ਨਾਲ ਪੁੱਛ ਕੇ ਤੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਤਿੰਨ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਐਨਐਚਐਸ ਹਸਪੀਟਲ ਹੈਗੇ ਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਤੇ ਰੈਫਰ ਲੈ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੈਗੇ ਆ ਬ੍ਰਿਸਟਲ ਬ੍ਰਿਸਟਲ ਲੰਡਨ ਤੇ ਗਲਾਸਗੋ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜੀ ਤੇ ਜੇ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਕੋਈ ਦਿੱਕਤ ਆਂਦੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ ਤੇ ਇਹ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਵੇਟਲੀ ਵੀ ਅਵੇਲੇਬਲ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ ਪਰ ਮੈਂ ਰეკਮੈਂਡ ਕਰੂੰਗਾ ਕਿ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਦੇ ਥਰੂ ਐਨਐਚਐਸ ਹਸਪਤਾਲ ਚ ਰੈਫਰ ਕਰਨ ਦੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰੋ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਉੱਥੇ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਉਹ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਦੇਖਣਗੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਿ ਦੋਨੋਂ ਦਵਾਈਆਂ ਨਾਲ ਟ੍ਰੇਨ ਹੈਗੇ ਆ ਆਮ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਇਹੋ ਜਿਹੇ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਮਿਲ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਆ ਜਦੋਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਜਾਓ ਤੇ ਆਮ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਹੋਮਿਓਪੈਥੀ ਨੂੰ ਇਹੋ ਜਿਹੀ ਦਵਾਈ ਮੰਨਿਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਜੋ ਸਲੋ ਹੌਲੀ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਦੀ ਆ ਆਪਾਂ ਵੀ ਇਹੀ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਕੇ ਹਟੇ ਆ ਕਿ ਹੌਲੀ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਦੀ ਆ ਪਰ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਉਹ ਬਿਮਾਰੀ ਨੂੰ ਜੜੋਂ ਫੜਦੀ ਹੈ ਬਿਲਕੁਲ ਬਿਲਕੁਲ ਸਹੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੈ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਹੌਲੀ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਦੀ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਕੁਝ ਬਿਮਾਰੀਆਂ ਹੈਗੀਆਂ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਤੇ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਅਸਰ ਬਹੁਤ ਤੇਜ਼ ਦਸਿਆ ਮੈਂ ਦੱਸਿਆ ਕਿ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਦੋਵੇਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਬੁਖਾਰ ਚਲਾ ਗਿਆ ਸੀਗਾ ਤੇ ਨਾ ਪਰ ਉਹ ਦੋਵਾਂ ਦਿਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਠੀਕ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਜੋ ਨਾਰਮਲ ਦਵਾਈ ਨਾਲ ਮੇਰੇ ਖਿਆਲ ਨਾਲ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਦੱਸੇ ਦੋ ਤਿੰਨ ਹਫਤਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਤਿੰਨ ਮਹੀਨੇ ਲੱਗੇ ਸੀ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਨਹੀਂ ਰਾਮ ਆਇਆ ਸੀ ਤਿੰਨ ਮਹੀਨਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹ ਠੀਕ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੋਇਆ ਪਰ ਹੋਮਿਓਪੈਥੀ ਦੋ ਦਿਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਦੋ ਦਿਨ ਸੋ ਹੋਮਿਓਪੈਥੀ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਇੰਨੀ ਸਲੋ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈਗੀ ਕੁਝ ਬਿਮਾਰੀਆਂ ਤੇ ਅਸਰ ਬਹੁਤ ਤੇਜ਼ ਹੈਗਾ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਹੈਲਨ ਦੱਸਿਆ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੇ ਫੀਵਰ ਹੈ ਉਹਦੇ ਤੇ ਇਹਦਾ ਅਸਰ ਇੰਨਾ ਤੇਜ਼ ਹੈਗਾ ਕਿ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ੀ ਦੋਨੇ ਵਾਂਗ ਅਸਰ ਕਰਦੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਬੰਦੇ ਨੂੰ ਕੋਈ ਘਬਰਾਹਟ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਦੱਸਿਆ ਕਿ ਕੋਈ ਟੈਸਟ ਆਉਣਾ ਜਾਂ ਐਗਜ਼ਾਮ ਆਉਣਾ ਜਾਂ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੇ ਜਹਾਜ਼ ਤੇ ਚੜਨਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਕੋਈ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਬਹੁਤ ਘਬਰਾਹਟ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਜਹਾਜ਼ ਤੇ ਚੜਨੀ ਤਾਂ ਠੀਕ ਹੈ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ੀ ਦਵਾਈ ਦੇ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਵੈਲਿਊ ਲੈ ਸਕਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਕੋਈ ਨਹੀਂ ਦੱਸ ਸਕਦੇ ਕੋਈ ਗੱਲ ਨਹੀਂ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਜੇ ਟੈਸਟ ਪਾਸ ਕਰਨਾ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੋਮਿਓਪੈਥੀ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਰੋਲ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਬਿਲਕੁਲ ਹੱਟ ਕੇ ਅਲੱਗ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਤੋਂ ਇਹ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਕਹੂੰਗਾ ਕਿ ਇਸ ਚੀਜ਼ ਨੂੰ ਦੇਖਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਲੈਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਤੇ ਜੇ ਅਸ ਫਾਰਮੇਸੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਮ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਮਿਲ ਸਕਦੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਜ